He's on trial between in front of the rulers. You understand? That's the palace where the rulers hang out. And it's built right up against the back of this hippodrome so that this can be used also to serve uh, an audience for the palace. Does that make sense? And we have parallels from other Roman cities of, of uh, being built and designed the same way. And so it makes most sense that the account that I'm going to read uh, will, will take place here, took place here. Does that logically make sense to you? Yes. Because everything we want to go, I'll, I'll just take the time to say this. What, we, what I want to go through with you this whole trip is, there's really, there's two ways to teach. One way, which I'm very used to going to school, is authoritatively. What that means is, hey, uh, you know, I was here for 10 years, you weren't. I know what I'm talking about, you don't. I'm going to tell you what's true, and then you're just supposed to believe me. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's the way most of my professors teach. <laughs> uh, then, what we want to talk about, we want to reason together. And we want to go through the evidence. We want, to, we want it to make logical sense to our brains mm -hmm. of why we're, uh, we're considering what we're considering. That's far more powerful. It's also far more persuasive. And so, um, and so we want to take the time to do that as we go from site to site. Um, so I'm in chapter 23 of Acts. Uh, verse 23, so Paul, the plot to kill Paul has happened, and now Paul is transferred to Caesarea. Then he called <clears throat> two of his centurions and ordered them, get ready a detachment of 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen. Think of that. Think of how that's 200 ho uh, soldiers, 200 more spearmen, and 70 horsemen. We're talking about 500 uh, huh. in this military uh coming down here with Paul to go to Caesarea at 9 tonight and remember they're fasting until they're not going to eat until they kill Paul and, and all this is going on um, so he comes down here and we've got all these trials trial before Felix trial before Festus and the one that I want to uh, focus on is uh, the Paul before Agrippa the next day, Agrippa and, uh, and Bernice, now this would be then uh, Agrippa the second. Okay, the next day, this is uh, verse 23 of chapter 25. The, the, the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking military officers and the prominent men of the city. Chapter 26, then Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul is in chains, and, uh, and here's what he says. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews, and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you listen to me patiently. The Jewish people all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child from the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time and can testify, if they are willing, that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion, living as a Pharisee. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I am on trial today. This is the promise our twelve tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God day and night. King Agrippa, it is because of this hope that these Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just, just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time, I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I have tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I, have, that I even hunted them down in the foreign cities. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, 
King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day. So I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer and as, uh, and as the first to rise from the dead would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense you are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. And then verse 32, Agrippa said to Festus, or th then the king rose with him, governor and Bernice. See, uh, well, he had already appealed to Caesar, and they say in verse 32, Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Of course, God's plan wasn't for him to be set free. God's plan was for him to take the message that we just heard him share here, the good news about who Jesus is, and take it to Rome. Which, remember, on the bluff over there where we'll go, there was a, what? first of all, by Herod the Great, a Roman temple, mm -hmm. right, to Augustus Caesar. And then what replaced that temple? What was the next building? Byzantine church. A church. At this time, when, uh, when this account is happening and this testimony is coming forth from Paul in chains, the temple is over there. In about 300 years, the gospel will so impact Rome that that temple to Augustus, where people are worshiping the Caesar of Rome, is going to change into a church Amen. where the people come to worship Jesus. That's good. The one whom Paul Amen. talks I love, about. I love. Powerful stuff. It's in our Bibles. And it's in the evidence as well. Yeah. It's in the layout of the city what happens so think of this place and keep in mind that this remember what jesus is, we're going to go over what jesus says in jerusalem when we're in jerusalem he tells them to take the word right to jerusalem to judea and samaria and then where the uttermost parts of the uttermost world. parts of the world this is a major city here on the coast where it goes out and uh yeah. to the uttermost parts of the world and paul of course is uh one of the major mouthpieces as an apostle for which it goes out. Not the only one, but of course one of the major ones. Amen. It goes out to the Gentiles. Okay?